Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Kurt trailer hitch on a 2022 Honda CRV. Now this is what the trailer hitch is going to look like when it's actually installed. And the great thing about this is the hidden cross tube. Now if that doesn't mean anything to you, that means that the metal part of the main part of the hitch when it attaches to the vehicle is actually hidden in the rear bumper. So the only thing that's going to be hanging down is going to be the receiver of the actual hitch. So it gives you a nice clean look, yet you still have the usability of the hitch. Now this hitch is gonna be a great option. And the fact that it is a two inch by two inch, and that means it's really gonna open up the window of all the different accessories that you can load up. Two inch by two inch is pretty standard uh, for your bike racks, cargo carriers, or even your ball mounts. Now when it comes to those accessories, you're gonna have a 5 8 hitch pin hole. Now the hitch does not come with a pin and clip, but a lot of your accessories when you pick them up will actually have these included. And if you wanted to step it up to a locking option, we actually have those available at eTrailer. And that way when you have your accessories loaded up, you can lock those in place and know that they're not gonna walk away in the hands of someone else. Now, if you do plan on towing, you're going to see a rolled style safety chain loop here. So it's going to be real easy to hook up your standard style hooks as well as your larger clevis style. Now, when it comes to towing, you're going to want to know the capacities that the hitch is capable of. And this one's rated decently at 3,500 pounds. And that's going to be your gross trailer weight rating, which is the weight of the trailer itself and the accessories loaded up. Now it also has a tongue weight rating of 525 pounds, and that's gonna be the downward pressure that's actually put on the inside of the receiver tube opening. Now, you cannot use this with weight distribution, and before you actually hook up and tow, you're gonna to wanna to check the vehicle's owner's manual to actually see what the vehicle is capable of. And you're gonna to wanna to take that number, compare it with what the hitch is capable of, take the lower of the two numbers just to stay safe. Now we're gonna get some quick measurements here. And the first measurement's gonna be from the center of the hitch pin opening to the furthest point of the rear fascia. It's gonna be right at about two inches. And that's important to note for some of your folding accessories, that way they don't make contact with your rear fascia. This one, I don't worry too much, um, but that is something you wanna look at when choosing your accessories. Now we're also gonna be checking our ground clearance here. So from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground, we're looking at about 13 and a half inches. And I don't really worry about the hitch making contact with the ground, but when you have your suspended accessories on here, like your car cargo carriers or bike racks, as you go up hills or inclines, sometimes you can actually have those bottom out. So something to keep in mind when driving. Now, if you are still interested in a hitch, that's awesome. It's going to really open up what you can do with your vehicle as far as towing or just having a little bit more real estate to store things on your vehicle. But sometimes the installation portion can scare you off. But not to worry, I'm going to be walking you through all of the steps to get this installed. And really, this isn't too bad to do in your driveway or garage. So follow me and we'll get this hitch installed. Our installation is going to begin by lowering our exhaust down by removing the rubber isolators from the hangers. Now, before we do that, we're going to want to support the exhaust. That way it's not actually hanging down. It can cause damage further down the line. So what I'll do to actually support it is I'm just using a cam buckle strap here and I'm just going to go across my suspension and that way it's just going to kind of hold it up and kind of create a cradle for it. Now, if you are doing this in your garage or on your driveway, you can actually use just maybe a block of wood or something. You just don't want this hanging down um, by itself. So just a little precautionary um, before we get these popped off. Now, as far as getting the isolators off, they can be a little bit tricky. Something that you can do is actually put a little bit of white lithium grease, or you can use a penetrating oil or even a soap water uh, concoction, and that's gonna help that rubber kind of just slide off the hanger. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray these down real quick. Now there's gonna be a total of three that we're gonna be tackling. First one is gonna be right here. We have one on our driver's side as well, so that's gonna be identical. And then there's also gonna be one more. So as we go back, we'll see back here. So we'll go ahead and spray that down. And we're just gonna be using a pry bar here. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to just find a nice point of leverage and you can actually see kind of where the hangers are welded onto that bracket. You can use that to kind of pry it off. So there's two of them on the muffler. There's just the one single one on the chassis. Whichever one comes off easiest, um, it's gonna be fine because it should, it doesn't really matter which side you go, but you can see here, I'm able to use the muffler as leverage to kind of pry this back. So there's one side and the other. 
So I'll go ahead and get our other isolators removed. If you don't have a pry bar, you can actually use a uh, long handled flathead screwdriver. It's going to kind of work the same, but just take your time there. Um, they may fight you a little bit, but we should be able to get these all popped off. So you can see with that last isolator, the exhaust does kind of drop down a little bit. Now I'm using a cam buckle strap, which is really nice because I can actually kind of adjust this strap and that's going to lower it down as necessary, but still keep it supported. So main thing is we're going to be putting some bolts up in the frame rail. So just making sure you have that clearance to be able to put the hitch in place. Now the hitch design actually has the crossbar kind of sitting behind the bumper here. So this underbody panel is going to need to come off and it's pretty easy to do. There's going to be a few plastic push pins. So we have one here, one here, a large center one. And then there's also another large one directly back from there. There's also going to be two 10 millimeter nuts here that we'll be taking off as well. We'll get this taken off. Now these plastic push pins, they can be tricky at times. Um, I have a panel removal tool here and these are really nice for kind of being able to get underneath this and uh, once you kind of have a gap you can kind of pry underneath the whole side of it pop the button out and then you can actually pop these out now you're going to want to hold on to these we'll need them for reinstallation later and these can break so just kind of take your time and if they do break you can generally pick up um, some spare ones at an auto parts store or we actually have performance tools here that we have replacement ones not a big deal if they break, but uh, another way, if you don't have this tool, just a small little flat head here, you can kind of do the same process. Just kind of pry on the center here, a little twisting motion to kind of create a gap. And as you work around, we should be able to get that center portion to pop out. And once you kind of get that gap there, you can a lot of times just pull it down with your hands and that'll remove it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll get our other two Big ones popped off just the same way, and then we'll get those 10 millimeters off and pull this panel down. Now we are going to be doing some trimming here on our rear fascia and this is just going to allow access for that receiver tube opening to actually come through the rear fascia. So I've gone ahead and just measured it out and I use painter's tape just to make sure that I have a nice clean line to follow. Um, I'm using a pair of just shears. This should go through the plastic fairly well, but if you have a Dremel or um, a cutting device that you prefer, you can kind of just score along here. Just make sure you don't go too far up. Um, there's nothing behind here. But there are some models that have the hands-free lift gate and that's going to have the actual sensor in here. So if that's the case, you're going to want to refer to the instruction manual and remove that as well as you may need to trim that um, just kind of in the same fashion as this. But the instruction manual has that covered. Ours does not have that. So I'm going to go ahead and just make our cut here on the fascia. So now I'm gonna go back with the file and I'm just gonna kind of clean up my edges and make these a little more even, um, but that's gonna kind of help take any of that flashing off. Um, so I'm gonna go grab my file and we'll get this smoothed down. Now our hitch is gonna mount up to our frame rail and we're gonna be putting some carriage bolts through these two holes. And the way we're gonna be doing that is our fish wire technique. So in your hardware, you're gonna find a wire with a coiled little spring end here. And we're going to just feed it in where we're actually going to have that stud coming through and just kind of push it back towards the large opening in the rear of the vehicle here and just kind of grab that with your fingers and once you have that end pulled through we can simply take our spacer block and you can just slide that on there and kind of just put it in the frame we're then going to take our carriage bolt and we're just going to thread this on that coiled section Once we have that coiled on, we're going to just simply pull this through and a quick little jostle should get this popped into that hole. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for this one and it's just going to be a short little journey right there. Um, but you're going to want to keep your 
actual wire on until we actually have the hitch in place. It's gonna make it a lot easier. Make sure that these don't push back in the frame. Once we have our hardware all fish wired in, okay, we will just raise our hitch in place. Now, if you need to grab an extra set of hands, by all means, uh, if you have your exhaust supported, you can kind of uh, rest it on here. You don't want to put all the weight, but it is kind of nice to be able to set it here for just a second. And what we're going to do is actually take our wires and we're going to feed it through the corresponding holes here. And this is going to kind of help align it and make sure that these don't push up in the process as we're trying to raise the hitch up. So go ahead and feed those in. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of get one side started, uh, hand tightening one of our flange nuts. And that's just gonna hold that up in place while I get the rest of the hardware up. So we'll just go ahead, raise this up. Now this is gonna be kind of tricky when raising up here. You're gonna see the tow hook is going to be kind of in the way. Now on this back side, there's gonna be a spot where we're gonna mount that tow hook uh, to the actual hitch here. So this is gonna go on the driver's side of it. So if that helps kind of align it, and then you're gonna go ahead and peel back a little bit here on the rear fascia. It's gonna kind of tuck in there. There's also some metal tabs and that's just to, for the plastic push pin that goes here. So you may have to kind of pull it back a little bit to get around those. But once you have that like that, it should feed up pretty easily here. And then I'm gonna just kind of hold this in place here. That should be enough threads. Um, now you wanna make sure this doesn't push back in the frame. So the fish wire is kind of nice to kind of pull it down, make sure you have that thread. I'm gonna take mine off here by just unscrewing it. Um, you can pull them off if you want, but the main thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure is when you hand tighten your flange nut here, just kind of put some pressure on that so it doesn't push up. And then you'll just get a few threads started and that's gonna hold that side up. And now I can hop over to the other side and do the same thing. And that way the hitch is supported for the rest of the hardware. Now, if the stud has popped back up and you're having trouble aligning it, you may kind of need to move the hitch around and find that hole to where it can pop through. So we have those hand tightened in. Before we crank those down, we're gonna want to take our large carriage bolt here. And this is just gonna go through the square slot here where the tow hook is. And then as that slides through, this plate is going to sandwich that in. And we'll just follow that up with the large flange nut here. So now we're just gonna go back and I'm gonna just tighten the bolts down with an 11 16 and that's gonna be for the four of them on the frame rails. And that's just gonna make sure that when we go to actually torque this down, that we're not just ratcheting a bunch, it's gonna take some of that away. But you don't have to get too crazy here because we are gonna use that torque wrench to get the proper specs. And this larger one here on the tow hook is actually gonna be a three quarter. So we'll tighten this one down as well. So now with our torque wrench, we're gonna go back and put these to the torque settings that are in the manufacturer's instructions. Now, these are going to be a different torque setting than the one that's on the tow hook. So just make sure that you are adjusting that torque as necessary. Now, if you need a torque wrench, we actually have them here at e-trailer or you can rent them at an auto parts store. And this is just gonna be an important step because it's gonna make sure that you don't have too much stress on the threads by over tightening, but also it's gonna make sure that it's snug and not gonna come loose over time. So we'll just go through here and torque these all down properly. Now here's where I talked previous about trimming this out. It's gonna be pretty easy to actually just take this and kind of mock it up where it was originally. 
Um, this slid over the tow hook previous. So all of this area, as you can tell, will need to be opened up. So what I'm gonna do is just take my shears and while this is in place, just kind of cut along where it's too wide and that's gonna open it up, allowing us to get this back in place. So shears work pretty well here. Um, it's kind of a fa fabric felt like material. So really a pair of scissors should cut through this pretty well. So now we're gonna take our under panel here and this is just gonna kinda slide back into its position. First, I'm gonna put them over the studs there. And this is just gonna kinda pop back. So I'm gonna put our 10 millimeters back in. And that's gonna kinda hold it in place. And then I'm gonna simply just put these back. Uh, now with this plastic, you're gonna want to actually pull this out as this sits with this under portion, kind of in between the bracket and the plastic. So just make sure that's in the proper orientation there. And I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down those 10 millimeter nuts. Now grab your plastic push pins and we have the two larger ones and those are going to go in this one here and then right here and then our last two are just going to pop in on these holes. So with that in place, now I'm going to raise our muffler back up and get our isolators put back in place. And you may need to raise up on the muffler just by lifting it a bit here and just putting those exhaust hangers right in the holes of the isolator here and just kind of pressing onto it. It should slide on there. And if you need to re-lube it, you can absolutely do that. But we'll go ahead and get the other two up. Now you can actually take down your strap or whatever you had supporting your exhaust. And that's pretty much gonna do it for the hitch install. The only thing we need to do now is get our car on the ground, hook up our accessories and start using our hitch. And that was a look and installation of the Kurt trailer hitch on a 2022 Honda CRV.